Are you running production workloads on top of Amazon Web Services? Why wouldn't you? They have an amazing suite of tools and they've got data centers around the globe. But if you're running CentOS Linux 7, you've only got a little bit of time left before CentOS Linux 7 goes end of life. That means no new packages, no new patches or updates, no bug fixes, and there'll be no new releases of CentOS Linux. So, humbly, if the shirt didn't give it away, I'd recommend moving those workloads to Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Why? It gives you all the benefits of running on top of AWS with all the benefits of running Red Hat Enterprise Linux. And as a RHEL systems administrator, I can tell you that RHEL is the way to go. Along with a deepening partnership with Amazon Web Services, you get everything that goes with RHEL, like government and security certifications. You can run the exact same Linux in your data center that you run in virtual machines, that you run in containers, and public and private clouds. You get all the RHEL goodness alongside of AWS. So how would you go about this conversion? It's simple. You just take CentOS Linux 7, you subscribe to our new offering, which we'll talk about in a second, and you run an in-place conversion tool called Convert to RHEL to replace all the CentOS Linux 7 packages with Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7 packages. So you may be asking, Eric, why wouldn't I just spin up a RHEL 7 instance and move my application over there? That is certainly an option. However, think about this. While you've got that EC2 instance up and running, you've got your production workload, you've got your new EC2 instance, you're literally paying for double the infrastructure during that migration process. You've got to spin up the new box, you've got to configure all your system services, you've got to create all your users and their passwords, then you can install the equivalent workload, then you can migrate over all the data from the CentOS Linux 7 box, shut that down, and move your production workloads onto the new system. Contrast that with Convert to RHEL. All you have to do is sign up for a special subscription that we'll talk about here in just a minute, and then install the Convert to RHEL utility, run the conversion, it'll do some checks. You've got built-in snapshot and data recovery with things like EC2. And once the process starts, you're converting all the CentOS Linux 7 packages to Red Hat Enterprise Linux packages. It's really easy, and we'll show you how here in just a second. While the process is fairly simple, I will say that Convert to RHEL is officially supported by Red Hat. That means that when you install the tool, you can create a support case. If you run into concerns or issues, you can open a support case. If you're not sure where to go and you've got hundreds or thousands of systems, you can actually hire Red Hat services to come in and consult with you, to produce Ansible playbooks, to set up a, a game plan, to help set up your timeline so that you can move efficiently and effectively from CentOS Linux 7 to RHEL 7 before the June 30th, 2024 end of life date. I hinted at a new offering, and I want to introduce you to the Red Hat Enterprise Linux for third-party Linux migration with extended lifecycle support, which, <laughs> unlike the name suggests, is an incredibly easy process to convert from CentOS Linux 7 to RHEL 7. And this offering is available through Amazon Web Services. That means that you can go to your existing CentOS Linux boxes and add them to the subscription and move forward with the in-place conversion utility convert to RHEL. Now, what does that mean? That means that at a, at a greatly discounted price, you get Red Hat Enterprise Linux server with ELS for up to four years. That means that even after June 30th, 2024, you can get support for Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7 and you get set up with all the utilities that you need for the convert to RHEL migration. This new offering includes Red Hat Enterprise Linux server, as well as four years of ELS, extended lifecycle support. That means that even after the end of life, you can continue to get support within RHEL 7 for four years. And that includes the ability to do an in-place conversion with Convert to RHEL. Also, good time to point out that you can move all of your production workloads to RHEL using this subscription, and that probably entitles you to an additional offering, the Red Hat Developer Subscription for Teams. What that means is all of your non-production systems will be covered under the, the D4T subscription, meaning that you can move all your production workloads over and all of your non-production workloads, all running RHEL 7, meaning that you don't have to maintain multiple different subscriptions, multiple different operating systems and distributions. You wanna see how easy it is? Let's take a look. Okay, so I've logged myself in to my AWS EC2 dashboard. You can see I've got just one system. It's called convert to rel There's the instance ID. So if I take a look at the instance ID, we can see that we are we can see all the different information from public IP addresses, 
But what I want to call out is that you can see that our platform is known as CentOS Inferred. That means that when I launched this instance originally, I used the official AWS Marketplace image for CentOS Linux 7. Now, because of the way that the console is set up, we don't have any way of confirming that that is what is still running. In fact, at the end of the demo, this will still say CentOS Inferred. Now, in the video description below, I've got a link to the new offering, the RHEL for third-party Linux migrations. And if you click on that link, you'll end up on a page that looks a lot like this. With this page, you get an explanation of what the offering is, you get the terms and conditions, you get some of the highlights for why you want to, might want to choose this offering, all that and so much more. When you're ready, click View Purchase Options. This will help walk you through how you want to set up your contract. I would highly recommend you choosing Auto Renew. That way you can continue to get the support for these systems every single month. I'm going to go ahead and click No because I don't want to uh, explain that on my next expense report. <laughs> now I'm going to select the number of vCPUs. In other words, how many virtual CPUs am I going to be using? Now in my case, I'm using a T3 large that only has two vCPUs. So I'm going to go ahead and, and create that contract and it'll show me what my total contract price is. It'll ask if I want to go ahead and pay now. Of course, I'm going to hit yes. Congratulations. <laughs> now, if you're an existing Red Hat customer, you can click on set up your account and learn more about the offering, more about running RHEL on AWS. But if you're brand new to Red Hat, you can click on this link and it'll give you some instructions as well as a video walkthrough of how to get your customer portal account set up so that you can then register new systems for Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Now that you followed all the instructions on that additional page, we can take a look at our demo system. If you need to go set up your Red Hat Access account, go ahead and pause this video, go set it up, and pick back up right here. Because what we're looking at now is the virtual console for the Convert to Rel system that I showed you in the intro to this demonstration. As you can see, we're running CentOS Linux 7.9. This is a very vanilla system. I don't have any workloads running on it. It's, it's pretty small as far as resources are concerned, but it'll serve for our demonstration today. So before we can start the actual conversion process, we need to install the convert to rel utility. Now, remember that I mentioned that convert to rel is an officially supported package and operation from Red Hat. So we can actually configure our system to run with a convert to rel repository. So what we'll do is we'll pull down the signing key, the GPG key, as well as the yum configuration file for the convert to rel .repo. With our configuration and signing key in place, we can run a yum repo list and see that convert to rel for OS 7 is in fact enabled on our system. Now we're ready to install the convert to rel utility. Just run a yum install. I want to use the TAC Y to go ahead and accept the installation. It's going to pull down the convert to rel utility and the supporting packages. Now we're ready to run the convert to rel process. Let's type in convert to rel. This command may seem a little complicated, but let's step through this. If you followed our how-to guide, you went through the process of setting up an activation key. And what this does is it sets us up with a key pair to basically authenticate all of our CentOS Linux 7 systems with Red Hat servers in order to register these systems. So we're going to call the convert to rel utility. We're going to input our organization ID, and we're going to specify an activation key. In my case, I used convert to rel. That way I knew exactly what the key was for. And the TACY option, which basically go, goes ahead and accepts any of the commands that it'll ask us for. Once we kick off that utility, the first thing we'll see is the EULA, the end user license agreement. I highly recommend you read that, just maybe not in the middle of a maintenance window. Now the convert to rel utility is going to start taking inventory. It's going to take a look at what repositories are enabled, what version of the operating system we're running, and what packages are installed. Which by the way, if you haven't already, do a yum update and make sure that you reboot your system so that you've got a clean build. That way you've got a clean boot image that convert to rel can work with. Now, because this process usually takes 15 to 20 minutes, depending on your server size and your resources and how much you have running on that system, this process can take a little bit of time. So using the beauty of post-editing, we're going to go ahead and speed this process up and look at this at a little bit faster rate. The next thing that we're going to see is the convert to rail utility is going to install the subscription manager package. What this does is it allows the system to, in the next step, to be registered with Red Hat's access servers. 
Once the subscription manager package has been installed, you'll see the convert to rail utility call subscription manager and register our system with the Red Hat subscription service. Using the activation key we specified, it'll attach any subscriptions that manage this instance's profile, as well as enable the appropriate repositories. We'll see a final warning scroll by about system changes. And now with the magic of post-editing, we'll see in seconds all the CentOS Linux packages finding a RHEL 7 equivalent, having those packages downloaded and staged. Now, all these changes have been staged, and the conversion process is ready to go. But at this point, nothing has been done to the system that can't be reversed. But we're going to go ahead and complete the conversion by running the reboot command. You'll see the system reboot, and as it does, you'll notice on the grub menu that it says Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7 and the kernel version. Once you get your login prompt, log in as you normally would, and we're going to cat the Etsy Red Hat release file that we looked at before, and you'll notice that we are, in fact, running Red Hat Enterprise Linux Server Release 7.9. From here, you can review the convert to rel logs to make sure that there weren't any warnings or any issues, or start validating that your workloads are running on top of rel 7. If you want to learn more about RHEL, more about Linux in general, I highly recommend you head over to our YouTube channel. We've got shows live every single week. In fact, if you're with us every other Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern, you can catch Red Hat Enterprise Linux Presents, where I and several of my co-hosts and a great number of guests join us every other week to talk about Linux systems administration, to talk about open source, to talk about RHEL and the industry in general. It is a great time, and I highly encourage you to join us live. Also, every Friday at noon Eastern, grab your lunch and a Linux terminal because we get into the terminal every Friday to talk about some new essential Linux systems administration task, from creating users and groups to managing Flatpak applications to running containers. You name it, we've probably done an episode with us. Join us every Friday. And of course, we're always looking for new ideas for tech tips just like this one. So give it a thumbs up if you like this content, share it with a friend, and of course, subscribe to get notifications when we go live or when we post videos just like this. Finally, if you have any ideas for any tech tip, something you want to know how to do inside RHEL, put it in the comments. We check the comments pretty much every single day, and we love to hear from you. Thank you so much. And on behalf of Red Hat and AWS, thank you for joining us. Mm -hmm.